Okay, the, the third example in which uh, certain value of, of Koreans is reflected in the language, the third example is sexism. Okay, this is an uh, in interesting one. And what's the example? Can I ask before I turn to what I have? From your knowledge of Korean, do you know of any terms or expressions? Yes. Nyan. <laughs> but we have nom. So it's this equivalent. Uh, so I don't think that's sexist. Sexist is the one that only singles out or is uh, targets women. Just one second. I'm not sure, but I heard something about honey buns. Do you know? Like honey buns? Yeah. Referring to the woman's backside. Men um, sort of um, compliment the woman's behind. <laughs> That's the exact expression? That's in English. Uh, there's a, you know, in but what's the in Korean? I, I, I don't know. I can't remember. Do you know? Yeah. Okay, well, let's get back, finish up with uh, what he just said. Why? I haven't heard anything about that. Honey bun? Hmm? Kulbokji. What is that? Singer? Um, this after school, a group of si girl, girl group mm -hmm. singer. And What's one of them's Yui. And um, she has a very fit body. And her thighs were I think that's what he's saying honey buns honey thighs because the hobokji is thighs in Korean gul is honey right. they put them together and make gul bokji so why is that well, well I mean just explain what he's I'm talking saying. about I'm looking for terms that are widely used not something that is in trend right now like gul bokji <laughs> okay could you bet? <laughs> right? I don't think there's an equivalent for that for guys. Yes, she. Say, you know, I. It's it's gonna be a uh, <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> I think there is an equivalent uh, term, okay? And also, that term. Sometimes it's used as a term of endearment, right? Yep. Mm. Ane, that's a good example. Right? Ane refers to person inside. Who do you think that refers to? Hmm? Housewife or homemaker, right? Uh, anything else? Yep. Heog is busy running around. <laughs> um, when we were talking to you over the break, you mentioned those like married couples, like and they call each other yobe. Yobo. Yobo, but um, with like wives, though, like they sometimes have to still use honorifics to their husband, and that's kind of sexist because I, because the husband doesn't have to use anything else to his wife, but mm. the wife still has to use other honorifics to his husband, to her husband. And that's kind of sexist because it's saying the husband is above his wife. Right. So, so the uh, that practice itself. Yeah, uh, but it's using linguistic terms. So is uh, sexist? Yes. I don't, know, I don't know the terms that they use. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But her point was how. Uh, women are expected to, or wives are expected to use honorific to their husbands and not the other way around, right? Anyone else? Okay, here are some of the examples. <laughs> Did anybody catch this? It should be without the E, right? Sexist terms. Right? Now you know. 
Newe refers to uh, couples. Ne meaning inside, wife. We outside, referring to husband, right? Ne inside person. Ansaram also referring to the the wife. Chipsaram house person. You know this is so so widely used. It's almost like there's no other term to describe one's wife, is there? You can't call your own wife puin. That's a, a sort of a respectful term to refer to someone else's wife. You don't use, you know, this term to refer to your wife. So how do you call your own wife? Even that is not really respectful, you see. It's more of a, hey, it's my wife kind of thing. Okay? So all of these terms, if you know the meanings, they're sexist, right? As if women belong inside the home, right? They're home persons, right? And... Uh, Another important uh, example of sexism in the Korean language is this. Uh, we make distinctions between uh, paternal relatives and maternal relatives. Maternal relatives are called what? Something we. We something, right? We meaning outside. So the relatives on your mother's side are considered outside the family line, outside. So you always refer to them by saying we samchon, right? We sachon, we meaning outside cousins, outside uncles, right? And uh, also, you know, your father's brothers and sisters are called differently than your mother's brothers and sisters, right? So there's also that distinction to discriminate against women, okay? Um, okay, so the, the relatives on your mother's side uh, have this prefix, we, that suggests an outsider identity, okay? Other sexist terms in Korean? This is really a terrible term. Uh, chonyo, uh, literally meaning a virgin to refer to unmarried women. Now, is this a bad term or what? Because this term carries this expectation in a way uh, that unmarried women should be virgins. Isn't that what it is? And, you know, maybe there is this... Uh, social uh, climate where that term is now less used but one term that is definitely used is no chanya right uh, and still carries the same meaning no matter how old you are if you're not married there is that expectation okay C very confusion no chanya meaning old to be made okay so even the term old maid in English is a sexist term, but this one is worse, right? Uh, do you f sense that this is there are serious problems with those terms or not? I, mean, I want to ask uh, foreign students. Right? Hmm. Um, See, shidek choga, see, tek is more respectful term for a residence or household, right? Ka is just a, you know, not respectful, but just a regular term, right? Ordinary term. So in reference to the man's family, is there's a, a show of respect, whereas for women, you know, just a, you know, just a family, right? Uh, and you also say when you get married for women, shijibgada. Go to the family of or the house 
of the the bridegroom right uh, so that sort of uh, has this uh, sexist overtone and uh, the last one uh, you know in the old days uh, during the chosen dynasty you know remarriage was actually illegal for women for men no problem but for women they were not allowed to remarry and this ter term was widely used any widowed so any widow uh, was called Mimangin, someone who's not dead yet, you know, although her husband is dead, she, you know, uh, <laughs> brazenly is still alive, all right? But believe it or not, this term is still used, okay? Uh, again, not as uh, extensively as before, but it's still there. Like, for Mimangin, it's clarified in Korean, like, what it means. Mm -hmm. So when somebody hears it, do they think of this meaning or no. do they just... Just like chonyo. See, people use it without thinking what it means. And also, no chonyo. Alright? So, that's the problem. Because I think people could only be made aware of these problems if there is a, a campaign or if feminists, you know, keep on raising hell over these terms. I think that's when people will come to their senses and say, yeah, we should not use these terms. But that hasn't happened yet. Okay? Like in the West. You know how the West, you know, the feminists in the West have carried out a very concerted effort to root out all these sexist terms in the newspapers, right? In newspapers, magazines, and, and scholarly journals and books. That has not happened in Korea. Okay? Yes. If you, th if, if you think about it in the English language, though, there's still like this like old maid too, which is sexist. But for men, if they're old and haven't married, they're still bachelors, mm. and that's not really sexist because they're just like, oh yeah, I'm still single and available. But women who are old and haven't married, they're old maids. Mm. So it's a it's a similar con like it's not quite as terrible, I think, but it's still a similar. Yeah, there are idea. certain similarities. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people sort of against this idea of uh, gender-neutral terms in every situation, they sort of make fun of how, not, not fun actually, you know, if you really look at the, the origin of the term history, right? Because in the past, history was about man's world, ma how, what men did and how men lived. So, uh, but uh, again, when people want to make fun of the, this feminist efforts to sort of uh, make it all these expressions uh, gender neutral, I think they make, f you know, sort of a fun expressions like instead of saying, you can't, you, now you can no longer say amen. <laughs> anyway, I take that back. Yes? Why do you think... Why do you think feminists in Korea have it, like brought this, brought these kinds of issues up? Though, it, well, it's really baffling. Uh, we know that there are feminists, but I wonder if, whether they are ghost feminists, just in names. Uh, because if you really look at uh, feminist movements in Korea, they have not really been at the forefront. I mean, they would raise concerns, you know, they would engage in dialogue when it comes to particular issue here and there, but as a whole, many of the things that have been done uh, for the sake of women, ironically, it's, it, was, it, was, it were these men who sort of complied uh, with even a, a very slight agitation on the part of, uh, you know, uh, of w women. I'm not sort of uh, downplaying the importance of these changes, but my point is, I think feminists in Korea have had it easy in the sense that when they made demands, 
for some reason, these sexist men just, you know, complied without really putting up a fight. Uh, so, you know, um, but still, you know, we still have a situation where uh, women do lag behind men uh, in most uh, situations. So we're going to, uh, well, yeah. Um, I was just going to say on the website um, for gender equality, up until about 2010, they still classified um, unwed mothers, single mothers as like whores. What um, websites? Like the official government, um, like whatever that is for the ministry for um, equality, something like that. Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, they did. I read it. <laughs> and actually, recently, um, um, there's a new law mm -hmm. regarding um, mothers. Mm -hmm. They have to. Um, they have to keep the baby for a week. They can't just, you know, give them away for adoption. They mm. have to keep the baby for a week, which is basically saying that it's the mother's responsibility. The father can just leave. The mother has to stay with the baby. Mm. Yeah, she has no choice. Okay. No, this is Korea. All right. I don't think that law passed yet, and I think it depends on um, not to uh, be sexist against females. Mm. So, it's not really a matter of something sexist, but just uh, uh, an issue related to adoption. Mm. No. Yeah, that is true. The I think uh, we do live in a society where the responsibility of child rearing, uh, we just we just sort of think of it as full, sort of a women's responsibility uh, only, right? Um, anyway, turning to the next example, uh, where again the the language reflecting the core values of Koreans. And I've said over and over how rice has been a very important uh, staple food uh, for Koreans, more so than bread is for Italians. Just kidding. Uh, I just I use that example because I know how much Italians love bread. Isn't that true? Particularly Italians over any other Europeans? I don't know. Well, anyway, for Koreans, uh, what's the term that, that I have invented uh, that you have to refer to my name every time you use this term? I haven't mentioned this. Well, see, I, we talked about the example of the Inuits and the uh, Filipinos, different terms for bananas. For Koreans, we have three different terms for rice. And I told you how much we love rice and we eat rice for breakfast, lunch, dinner and for nighttime snack. So what does that make Koreans? Ricist. Okay, so uh, they think that rice is, is better staple food than any others. Okay, be it pasta, pizza, bread, hamburger, whatever. Rice is the best. That's why we are all ricists. And whenever you use this uh, term, you always have to say, oh, this was mentioned by, you know, so-and-so, right? Back in Korea. Yeah. Bori, well, poribab is, it, it includes, uh, see, that, that is indicative of how we used the term pop to refer to anything we eat. Okay. You know, when, when Koreans go out to, when they want to say, let's go out to eat, what do they say? Pam mogoro gaja, right? It's literally saying, let's go eat rice. But do they actually go and eat rice? Sometimes it could be hamburger, it could be something different. They always say, let's go eat rice. 
I told you we're a racist. So even in our expressions, rice is everywhere. Right? During lunch and dinner, uh, you know, breakfast times, what is the greeting? Pamalanya. <laughs> right? Of, uh, among friends, that is. So, um, rice uh, is used for many of our expressions. Okay? And look at this, papkap. Papkap to motanda. Paptong. Pamma torzinda. See, I think in English you also have an expression, I'm losing my appetite, right? But we don't say, we just don't say, I'm losing my appetite. It's like, I'm losing my appetite for what? Rice. Okay? Income? Papjul. So you earn money to buy rice. That's <laughs> how, what it is, practically, right? And papari means of livelihood. Okay? So everything is, in many ways, tied to this treasured item, rice. And we also say, chukto bapto anida. It's not rice, nor is it porridge. Or juk, so it means so it's nothing, right? Um, have we done this before? In other class, we we have, right? But since <laughs> we love rice, uh, let's do some quiz on rice. Uh, why do people throw rice on the young couple at a wedding? We don't do that in Korea, but it's done in the West, right? Why is it? Why is that? Rice is the symbol of fertility. I gave away the answer too early. For how many people in the world is rice the staple food? One fourth of the world population, one third, over half of the world population. What's the answer? Did you say one? Two. One third. It's number three. Because, uh, you know, you just add Chinese, Indians, Koreans, Japanese, half of the world population, right? Uh, according to scientists, how many varieties of rice are there? 140,000, 20,000, 2300 oh <laughs> excuse me it's my finger <laughs> which which of these can be made from rice and its byproducts rope beer toothpaste tire toner Let me tell you this much. If I'm climbing anywhere and they use rope made out of rice, I'm not climbing. <laughs> and if there's any tire that is made out of rice and I'm going to have to drive, I'd rather walk, right? So what's the answer? Beer made out of rice? No, toothpaste. See, it's good for whitening your teeth. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Rice is white, right? So I just made the connection. Yeah? No, no, 140,000. That was... <laughs> Mark, that was good. Ingenious uh, way to make people laugh. The answer was one, number one. Very good. In which year did the UN decide to launch the International Year of Rice? 1997, 2000, 2004, 2008. This is a stupid question because how would you know, right? You're not even, a, especially for foreign students, you're not even racist. Right? The answer is 2004. Oops. <laughs> Number five. 
It's a joke. What do you think? Number three, yes. 2004. This is the killer. What was the slogan of the International Year of Rice in 2004? Number one, rice is nice. Number two, all Koreans are racists. Just kidding. Rice is life. Third, a plate of rice a day keeps the doctor away. Excellent uh, slogan. Number four, I love this the best. Makoli, you know, rice wine. Made without rice is not makoli. Very good. The answer is? I'll go with number three. Ah, number two. Rice is life. Uh, I have an actual poster there. What's uh, 2012? The, what's the, like, the year of what? Do you know? <laughs> I'm talking about the UN whatever. Does anybody know? If not, move on. So the lang Korean language reflecting the core values of Koreans, you had four examples so far, what are they? Huh? Sexism, rice, hierarchy, Collectivism, right? Number five is hunger. So this is something I like to share with you as a sort of a passing note, something to sort of have uh, un have this understanding that we have this very unique situation where uh, eating as a verb, mokta figures prominently in the Korean language, okay? The one explanation is this. The hunger was a, a matter of fact for so many Koreans for so long that over time, they have, this, they have projected this desire for, f for food, desire for eating in their everyday language use, okay? So... Uh, you know, in the West, uh, before eating, what do you say? Bon appetit, which, is to, which means good meal, enjoy your meal, right? Now, what do we say in Korean? Hmm? Now, you hear more people say, masikke tuseyo, right? But you know what a typical sort of a greeting was before eating? Does anybody know? Mani duzeo. Right? And if you went to your friend's house, your friend's mother would always say, Mani mogora. Eat a lot. That was what you were told to do. Why? Because there was not enough food. Okay? I mean, that was the culture for so many, so many years. Okay? So, uh, we, you've, I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm not going to recite all these examples of uh, proverbs that talk about eating, right? But uh, uh, what's more important is uh, this. I mean, there are... <laughs> well, well, the examples are so many, right? Like... Nai mokta, to age. Maum mokta. Maumul kocho mokta. You all understand the 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 translations, right? Yong uh, mokta, yon mokta. See, this is uh, something that I've been informed by a student. Before that information, I, ha I told the student something else. But when I got that and I told other people, they all agreed. It makes sense. Okay? Because many swear words, as you know, right, refer to taboos. Something sexual, right? You know that, right? So that makes a perfect sense. Uh, 더위 먹다, 
eat heat, that is to say you're so hot. Not in the sense of girls' generation song, but uh, you know, you're really <laughs> hot. What else can you say? Nimul uh, Mokta, eat a bribe. Tonul uh, Mokta, so if you put money into a vending machine and you know, you, you don't get uh, what you wanted to purchase, you say, you know, don't mock that, right? Nallo uh, mock Okay, eat, get profit without proper costs. Kom mock Eat a scare. Kamdong mock Champion mock da. Il mock da. Goltang mock E mokta. Uh, it's not to say, you know, eat a child. Ijo uh, mokta <laughs> or ka mokta. Bul mokta. Ki mokta. Nampyon java mokta. Eat a husband. Yeah? So when you hear that, 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 that is not to say any kind of a cannibalistic act. But. Uh, can you think of any other examples? And we say things like mokko salgi himdada, himdulda. When you say, when you want to say, oh, I have a hard time, you know, making a living, you say things like, it's hard to eat and to live yeah and to top it all off what do you say the what do you call the the, the, the sign at in English it's at but for Koreans it has to be something that that is edible kolbeng right oh ah but for Koreans, so is there any cultural explanation for that? Bulgarians love monkeys. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Um, but now um, we talked about the Korean examples, and I'd like to end this discussion uh, on you know, how the lang Korean language or language reflects the core values uh, of the speakers. I'd like to sort of uh, close this is discussion with the example from the United States. Um, and I don't want any Americans to be offended by what I have to say, but this is not something that I, I say arbitrarily. If you pick up... Uh, a book on this very topic about how the language reflects the core values of the speakers they talk about these these examples from the United States and believe it or not certain books they don't use the term American they say citizens of the United States for the lack of a better term because you know you I'm sure you've heard many Americans saying things like I'm from America instead of saying I'm from the United States or USA or in America this is what we do kind of thing right and of course they call themselves Americans so how how did that happen the answer is Americans think of themselves as the people of the most powerful nation in the world. So they have internalized this. The use of the term American is an indication, is a reflection of this value that Americans have, that they're the most powerful country in the world. Okay? Uh, you're frowning. So I, I was wondering if you had different thoughts. You know, America includes like some 30, 40 countries, right? South America, North America, Central America. 
they're all part of the continent called America. So what gives people in the United States the right to call themselves Americans? Can, as an example, can uh, Ch Japanese just call themselves Asian? And do not let any other people in Asia to call themselves Asian? Or what about in Europe? See, it's only in the United States. Yes or no? So, um, and also, um, so who speaks Spanish in this uh, classroom? Anybody? Well, I heard that uh, in Spanish, Americans are called uh, United Statesians, not Americans. Is that true? Well, see, see they have, see Spanish people, I think maybe they have their own pride, uh, have their way of calling people of the United States as something different, right? Um, Anyway, uh, so that's one example. And the second example would be how things like the, the championship series of professional baseball in the USA is called World Series. Although it's not formally, it has, it's not a, a world anything, right? It's a, it's a championship series of this professional, you know, baseball uh, association, right? But they call it the World Series because, again, it reflects the core values of the people in the United States. And they also, when a uh, new champion is crowned for the NBA or NHL, they always say things like world champions. Okay? Can you think of any other examples of from the United States where their particular use of certain terms reflect... Their core values. I, th I think I could come up with uh, another example of how they tend to glorify their past presidents than any other nation I know. Uh, you have so many, not so many, but you know, airports named after the you know the the uh, past presidents. You have you know, bills, right? I'm talking about bank, bank notes with the pres past presidents on the notes. Um, and there are many other ways, yeah? But that's really World Trade Center, no? Well, yeah, you could try to come up with something more like uh, using the term world, but it doesn't really have to do with, uh, have anything to do with uh, world. Uh, anyway, anything uniquely American, and yet it reflects sort of the, the American value of, you know, or how they see themselves as the center of uh, the world at this point. Now, final question. Any country that you know, uh, any, can you think of any examples where it reflects the core values of the speakers? Like all the examples that we talked about today and, 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 and in, a, in other uh, classes. I'm from a Haitian family. Oh. I come from a Haitian family, and you know how you said there's certain like things like in America, like English, there's like a whole bunch of words for certain things. Yeah. In Creole, there's only like one word for each thing. Right. Like sugar is souk, and like it's really similar to French too as right. well. So mm -hmm. there's only like one word for each thing. There's mm -hmm. not many like words to describe certain stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a straightforward language, I guess you mm -hmm. could say. So that's the only thing I could really think of. And in terms of that. Um, the U.S. tends to do, like, television shows that say, like, 
America's next top model or like America's next top whatever, but it's usually just like a couple people from the East Coast or like the West Coast and that's it. Or maybe they might have a per like a contestant that might be from another country, but they were born in America or have been kind of Americanized and have those core values, I guess mm. you could say. So that's the only other example I can really think of mm. for that. Because mostly those world things are used in sports, at least in my experience. Yeah. Most of them are only used in sports. I haven't really seen them in other things as much, but I've seen them mostly only in the sports world. So. And the U.S. really does think of themselves mm. as, like, number one in all types of sports, so. So, uh, I think uh, Americans, America, you know, I think, you think uh, there will ever be a day when uh, political correctness will, will uh, expect people in the United States to say things like USA rather than America? Instead of saying in America, you would say in the United States or in the USA. You think there'll ever come a time? Right now, there's no problem for people in the, from the United States to say, you know, America to refer to the USA and to refer to themselves as Americans. Again, no problem with that. But can you envision a time, 10, 20, maybe half a, half a century later, that maybe they'll come to a point where they'll say, maybe it's not such a correct thing to say, America, or American. Okay, it's, it's a question. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah. Like usually, uh, before I came to Korea, the world map, as I see it, you can portray Asia at the uh, right side, but in the Asian version, like Korean version of the world map, it's uh, it's kind of like the Pacific Ocean is in the center. Right. right. So Korea is more to the left. And I also saw this inverted, uh, how we call it, like reversed, I don't know, the like upside down map in which uh, they say that they do it like this so Korea, Korea can look more to be like more in the center. I don't know. Like I saw this and asked, why is it upside down? Mm. Yeah, I think I saw it in the Dongwon Global Center, if I'm not, yeah, if I'm not wrong. So, uh, so it's more like a question, uh, is there anything true to that? Or, like, I don't know, what's the reason for the map to be upside down? I understand, like, to for the Pacific Ocean to be in the center, like, it's more logical, like, for this side of the world. But I don't get that. Hmm. Um, well, I don't uh, have a ready answer for that. Okay. But I, but as you mentioned the map, I was trying to think whether, you know, depending on the location, whether you have a different representations of the Earth, right? For example, why is Asia east, not west? Because the world was seen from the Western perspective, right? So from their perspective, you know, Asia is here. But if the world was seen from North American perspective, East could easily be been West, right? But the USA and, and North America became more powerful later. Everything was European-centric before, right? Before the rise of the United States. So that's why... Asia is considered East, right? So even this, it's all an interpretation. Now, your comment made me think whether in the USA is the map any different from the map you see in Korea? In Korea, definitely the Pacific Ocean in the middle, Asia here, North America, uh, America, and Europe here, right? What about in North America? What's, what, how does the map look like? Yeah. Wow. Well, there's your answer. So it, you know, depending on where you live, you see that the the the, the perception of the the globe is different, right? Uh, again, it's something that we sort of know and take for granted, but it's interesting to 
be reminded of how these differences exist. Okay? All right. Thank you, and I'll see you guys uh, next week.